Man, first an idea, uh, then a desire to, to make it happen. Um, how much time of work um, in your life does this album result from? I don't know, how old am I? <laughs> um, I don't know, you know, you, you are, whatever album you do, when people say how long it takes, it's always, it's really how many years you put in. So I guess it took, uh, it didn't take 15 years to make this album, it took 56 years to make this album. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, among the, the many marks um, that that this album has, it um, seems to me that uh, uh, like a mess of rock sounds, you know, uh, pure, high energy. Nothing is accidents. No, there's no accidents when you're making mm -hmm. an album. Everything is a, everything starts from a vision that you have. But, you know, I've always, I've always treated the album, you know, nowadays with, Nowadays, with playlisting and digital and, and all that, I think people are more concerned about single songs and, yep. you know, uh, but I really don't care about algorithms and metrics and all that bullshit. You know, I, I we, we make music to make music for people to enjoy. And even the singles that we put out, everything, it's there's no big marketing plan. It's just out of what we want, what we, we dictate the algorithm. We don't yeah. let anybody else, we don't let anybody else dictate our algorithm, even though people keep trying to, you know, with the success that's happening from this album, everybody's like, okay, now you got to do this because the algorithm is saying, do this. I, I yeah. say, uh, take the algorithm to go fuck itself, to be honest with you. But, um, it's just I'm, I'm just not interested in uh in that 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 approach and it's the same thing with making an album you make an album because of the passion and the love for it and also you know the album is a set list it's like a show it's putting on a it's kind of like a three three act play that you put on and you want somebody to put on their headphones or go for a drive in the car yeah and have an experience it's only 52 minutes or something it's, it's not very long but it's you know we want people to have an affair with the album. Not, not everybody's going to like all the songs, but they'll find something in there. And even when they go back a second, third, fourth time, they'll find something new, you know? Yeah. Can we talk about the, 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 the cover of this six? Uh, you don't like, you don't like the way I look no, on the cover? No, no, I love, I love, I love. And you, you don't like the way I look on the cover? <laughs> That's me. <laughs> um, yeah. What do you want to talk about? Look, I mean, um, from the beginning when we were writing some of the heavier when i saw the first time i saw the, the cover sorry man uh, when i saw the cover for the for the first time seems to me like an uh, ae image you know like uh, <laughs> something processed you know no you know it's a real gorilla it's a real <laughs> gorilla but um it's you know it's when we were first writing that the heavier songs of the album uh we were saying man this feels like a like a 700 pound gorilla, you know, like the songs like Rise and, and Rebel and stuff. So that always stuck with me. So I looked for a long time, probably years, looked for this image. And when I saw this image, I knew right away that that uh, Pakanuga, as we're calling him, that's, that's his name, <laughs> um, was the album cover because it's it represents the look on the look on this gorilla's face says said so many different things to me it, it it it's a lot like extreme and like myself it's it's aged you know it's weathered it, it's scarred it looks like it's been around for a while and it's uh it's older and but then the look that he's giving you through his eyes is like <laughs> yeah we might be older but don't fuck with us you know like <laughs> don't, don't mess with us we st we're still fierce we still feel the confidence and, and he looked confident and and also, you know, at the same time, I had a little bit of a smile on his face, a little smirk, like, you know, uh, it, you know, it's still rock and roll. Like everything about this gorilla said everything about where I am and where Extreme is right now at this time. An album with uh, with Dyson, uh with uh, feet already stepping on the um, Billboard charts. Um, yeah, everywhere, man. It's been crazy all over. It's crazy. There, there's a lot of R and B, Latin pop, hip hop too, uh, on this century. Uh, but I would say that in month, uh, I I haven't seen so much rock climbing to to the charts. Uh, how do you see that reaction from from public? Uh, it's it's a European vision, okay. Uh, but so many rock albums in this year, uh, Foo Fighters, Extreme. Queens of a Stone Age. Uh. Yeah. 
Yeah, look, I mean, hopefully we're mentioned. I mean, we're in those charts with those bands. I mean, those bands are a bit bigger than we are, Foo Fighters especially. But I would put our album up against anybody's album. You know, I mean, I, I feel that confident. I think, I think the album itself, never mind me or Extreme, the album, if I heard that, if I heard that album and it wasn't us, I would think the same way I think about the album now. I think it belongs there. I think it's a well-made album. I think the songs are there. I think the, the musicianship, the chemistry, and uh, and the guitar playing. But I think more importantly, what's really there and what people are connecting with is the mythology of rock and roll. Yeah, so I, th I think that's really what's missing a lot in guitar-driven uh, music is that I think when people saw a guitar player that's in a band with songs and arrangements and and you know the videos and everything, it was almost like seeing something that people were saying it's so fresh. But for us, it was like no, this <laughs> this is like kind of going back for us. You know, this is this is more of a reminder, yeah. you know, than it is anything else. That you know, you can still be passionate and have fire and and do all those things. Um, and and uh, and the, you know the people are letting us know that that they're starved. You know they're starved for rock and roll like this. I think. Yeah, and we saw that that those comments on the boxes of YouTube and uh, yeah. something like that. After nearly forty years of playing, uh, we still have to to ask you about how you came up with a certain riff. But I really want to ask you <laughs> about the song "Rise." Um, which became a phenomenon uh, in this album. That riff, <laughs> what crossed your mind to do that? So well, I'm, I'm going to, I mean, the, the, one of the main reasons, obviously, as you know, you know, like some of the magazines that came out recently, especially guitar magazines are saying it's the solo of the century. And yeah. Th things like that, which is really, <laughs> it's what nice to hear. What the fuck you are thinking when you do yeah. that? I mean, you know, I first I was like so the century I mean I mean I've been playing this stuff for 40 years and playing this this same kind of style and technically and everything but uh, it wasn't until um, I had gotten a text from Steve Lukather and and he's like look we know you can play we know the band is the band but he said to me because I kind of disagreed with it I go that's kind of a big thing to say about anybody but he said okay then he, he said let me ask you a question then When's the last time you as a guitar player or me or anybody that we know, Steve Vai or anybody else or Brian May called each other up and said, have you heard this guitar player? Do you know what I mean? Like when's the last time you were that excited? And I was like, and, he's, and he goes, wow, you're being kind of quiet. I'm like, I can't remember. He goes, that's the point. He said, that's <laughs> the point. When somebody says the soul of the century he goes, it's been a while. It's been a while since a band, and a guitar player in a band. There's a great guitar players all over the internet, all over Instagram and TikTok and everything. I mean, great players that I follow, that I admire. And by no means, when I say, you know, there's plenty of guitar playing, but within songs, not as much. Within music, within a band, within a culture. And as far as Rise, the riff, I have to give a lot of credit to uh, Jordan Ferreira, who I work with which is George Freire's son, right? Yeah. And he's a great writer. And uh, he had these amazing ideas that he shared with me. And uh, they weren't completed songs. And, uh, you know, we worked together in compiling, you know, to turning it into songs that songwriters do. But I have to give him a lot of credit on the on, on some of the riffs and the guitar and everything on here. He, uh, he, did, he did a great job. Really great. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we'll be writing some more stuff. But Yeah, you will. The internet has changed the whole game of the world, as you said. Uh, learning music is one of them. Uh, do you consider the a gift of your time, our time, uh, to have uh, been able to listen to your idols? Do you think uh, it's uh, it's a gift? You have a chance to to see so many things, so many guys playing the uh, random stuff or you don't have a voice it's difficult to have a voice in this scenario yeah i mean it, it's really i've always been of the mind that there's no right or wrong way to do anything i don't criticize anybody if somebody wants to sit and all they're going to do is you know every day play some stuff on internet i'm like great because i'll i'll listen i'll follow <laughs> i get inspired from that stuff and then i but then again i also would love And a lot of the guitar players I'm talking about do play live. 
but they got discovered or well known through their uh, socials and stuff like that. But I would encourage these players that are so talented and younger players to put bands together, you know what I mean? And write yeah. songs because I'm of the mind that if uh, shredding and doing something as a guitar player, playing faster or doing things or skills, or whatever, it's great. But I find it a lot easier just sitting in my studio and just playing nonstop and doing things that might impress people. Yeah. I find it a lot easier doing that within a song and playing for the culture of the song, you know, if so, emotionally, not just technically, technically there are people that are much better than, than I am. I'm not even being humble. It's a fact There are people that are doing things that I'm watching going, wow, I, I don't <laughs> even understand how to do sort of alternate things they're doing. But, but I think, I think there's something really powerful and amazing about what Brian May did in Queen, what Jimmy Page did in Led Zeppelin, uh, what Eddie Van Halen did in Van Halen. Everybody pulls the guitar player out. I, I, I never do that. You know, I, I, I never try to do that. I always, I don't think the guitar players would be as great or as good sounding or the solos or things mm -hmm. if it wasn't for the band and the production and everything. And I think it's a lot harder to play a certain amount of time to play it for the emotion of the song. If the song is small town, beautiful, and it's, and it's a really emotional song. Then you, you play within the culture and the tone and the speed and the, everything of the song, just like rise was an exciting solo section because it was an exciting song. And, yeah. and, and uh, it's like that with hurricane or anything. And, you know, I, I know that a lot of people, even after Banshee came out and rebel, they're like, Oh, you know, the solos are good. They're, they're not as uh, jaw dropping as rise. And I, <laughs> when somebody says that, I actually take that as a compliment, you know, some friends of mine get mad. What are you talking about? The solo, all the souls. I mean, go, no, I understand what they mean. And I'm happy they're saying that this is not an Olympics. It's not supposed to drop people's jaws. It's supposed to touch people. Dropping jaws is for guitar players who just want to be technical and want to yeah. yeah. That's it. But you can also drop people's jaws emotionally. And I think Rise does that as well. I think you can play fast and be emotional. I think you can play. And the reason I say that is because if the song guides you the song tells you where to go the song the tone the lyrics the melody it's like a gift to the guy who's playing a solo so you have a choice to dive into the culture of the song or just be it join the olympics and just impress everybody <laughs> in the solo and i never wanted to do that can the solos be impressive yeah but i also think they can be impressive melodically i think they can be impressive emotionally um so yeah absolutely and serving the song and the band. Serving the song, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. By the way, tell me uh, about that uh, whole revival that hit you with the uh, inclusion of Play With Me in Stranger Things. Uh, for so many kids, I, I guess, um, was the first, their first time uh, uh, in three decades <laughs> of uh, extreme band. Uh, the first time with your song. Uh, how do you feel that uh, revival? in that I mean, mess look, I, 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 I think it's great I, I i mean i think it's really important like i said to we're putting out a video there's an alternate video for rise that's mm -hmm. coming yep. uh you might have seen it because you have a smile on your face so you might have seen it but uh <laughs> but uh, no 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 <laughs> <laughs> might have showed you might, which is fine but it's finally coming out it was supposed to be the original video to rise that uh that i created and me and my partner Renee directed, but we decided to just go just with the band version, but we're going to release the other version soon for one reason. One reason is to inspire and to get people to play the song and actually perform the song live and kind of do what play with me was doing. And that's, you know, the idea isn't to save rock and roll. Nobody's going to save rock and roll and rock and roll doesn't need to, does not need to be saved, but maybe we can keep it alive and well and, 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 and and get more people involved and more young, younger generations involved and and not just playing guitar or drums or bass but putting a band together writing songs chemistry all that stuff so i think stranger things hopefully helps people a, a different generation find that and recognize that you know mm -hmm. i know how, how important band unity is to to you um and that chemistry uh, but I, i'd like to know if you if we'll see here uh, in near future with uh, other um, features, artists, bands, uh, um, I don't for know. now it's extreme. This this new stuff. Yeah, look, 
you know, look, we're we're very blessed to have the reaction we have, and I'm sure yeah. we'll be doing, we're doing the U.S. in August, and we're doing you know Australia, Asia in September, uh, U.K., Europe, not Portugal for some reason. Not I don't know Portugal. Why. Yeah, I don't think the Portuguese promoters like us. They, they nobody no. requested nobody requested us to come, so they must not like us very much, or like me, one or the other. <laughs> Because you don't speak Portuguese with me right now. <laughs> Isso é um problema, mas olha, isso olha, é isso. problema deles. Problema deles. Não, mas listen, the reason I don't speak, I, I can speak Portuguese fairly well, but I, I can't describe living in, a, in, in the country for, um, for 52 years straight oh, where, of course. Yeah, man. where there's, there's speaking English and there's speaking Portuguese. And yeah. then there's ex, explicit and the talent that you have and the words that you use to describe art yeah. and music the way you do it. Unfortunately, I'm not around many Portuguese people to, to practice that. Uh, it's like me and myself, you know, and, uh, but, um, Love to you. <laughs> and, but you know what? And, 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 and the, and the thing is, is that, uh, yeah, I was surprised, but I think all these tours that we're doing this year mm -hmm. are just yeah. little areas of every continent. I think we're going to go back and do properly and hopefully play, play in Lisbon and, you know, and, uh, and, you know, play more cities throughout Europe and, And the, and the states and South America and all and you know we you know Canada all the places that we're not going to do this time mm -hmm. for the next year certainly yeah the only reason we weren't even supposed to be doing shows this year the only reason we're doing them is because it's a, it's it's amazing <laughs> it's amazing if you get a certain amount of views yeah and a certain amount of sales that all of a sudden promoters want you to they've always loved you they want you to come and play except for Portugal oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, um How do you return to to being those those boys who were fans of the of the Queen band and the the Queen 2 album in particular um, to 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 make their own songs and and sounds right now in this year is the the chemistry uh, that makes everything uh, happen again and again and again with I a mean, band? I, th I think it's chemistry but I think in every band that has to be someone sometimes it's one person who drives the ambition and the drive you know it is kind of like it doesn't mean somebody's more important than the other person it's like it's like it's, it's, you go into battle you have a general right yeah you have a, everybody matters general soldiers everybody the medic all of it i look at bands like that but i think some some bands most bands have usually a person that if they're not writing or if they're not picking or they're not, or if they're not pushing, nothing happens. Right. Or if they leave, nothing happens. Or if, or if they die, nothing happens, you know? And I think sometimes that's when you talk about bands like Queen and Freddie and, and, you know, and uh, you know, it, it's difficult even with Led Zeppelin, you know, in, in their case, it might've been all four of them because, you know, once Bonham died, they didn't even want to do anything more. Some bands are so powerful that, one guy goes it's like uh oh the whole chemistry falls apart yeah yeah I think, i think creatively speaking it really depends how many writers there are in the band and and you know so i i think with extreme i've always been that that guy that pushes the band even though gary writes uh i think you know i've always been the one that lights the fire you know mm -hmm. so If you don't hear, if you don't hear anything from the band, it's it's my fault always. <laughs> Your schedule. Uh, there's a song that drags me along, uh, and it's because uh, it has one of the, your best friends, um, and because uh, it it has one of the the people I enjoyed meeting uh, the most in recent years, uh, or John John Martins. Um, is that <laughs> again uh, a testament of of love? with cathartic effect to you oh yeah i mean i think i think what that shows is that you know is that um john was the perfect example of what i've always believed which is like you know love and and, and family does not is not a blood related thing that's what thicker that's what the song thicker than blood's about mm -hmm. that you know just because you are blood relatives and because you're related through blood It has no guarantees, no guarantees that somebody's going to love you, no guarantees that they're not going to betray you, no guarantees that they care about you. It's just, you know, everybody's, oh, it's, you know, 
everybody's like, oh, when it's your brother or when it's your sister or with your parents, you got to do everything for them, no matter what they do. I disagree with that. I think people have to earn, a brother has to earn being your brother. A sister has to earn being a sister. It doesn't just happen through birth and through childbirth automatically. We've been, we, our old world generations believe that we would die for everybody, no matter if they were murderers or if they, <laughs> they tried to kill me or whatever, it wouldn't make a difference. And especially in, 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 in you know, especially in Portugal, especially in the way we're brought up as a Portuguese family. But the truth is, is that you have to earn that love. And, uh, and John was that perfect proof that it's like, man, for a person who's only in my life a short amount of time, you know, it felt like you, it felt like how, how much it was surprising, how much you could impact someone, change their lives, add to their lives, like bring joy to their lives and become such a part of your, an important part of your life in such a short amount of time. You know, we, we can have this people that you've known, I'm sure for decades and, and you're kind of like, maybe you don't talk to them as much, but they're in your lives for decades. And then all of a sudden there's somebody you've only known for a year, six months that has taught you and brought so much different things and shown you, you know, how much friendship there can be and everything like that. So John, I think, you know, I thought I was, you know, I thought I was the only one, <laughs> boy, was I wrong. You know, I mean, everybody that John Martin's got in front of, even for five minutes, they, they don't forget. They don't forget him, whether it's offering up his beds, his houses, his, his food, driving you 3 billion miles, working, helping you build your studio. Uh, I think, I, I think that's, you know, that's a real testament and, 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 you know, and his family and his kids are amazing, beautiful family that he raised as a father, uh, you know, great wife and children. And it, it's devastating. It's when a man like that goes too early like that, man, it's, it, it still hurts. It still hurts me. I can't even imagine being, you know, his son, being his wife and his, his sister and his family. I mean, it's, it is not a day that goes by where you're like, oh, you know, I'm in my studio. I see the door that he built that was still a little bit crooked. <laughs> <laughs> <That's their laughs> I always think John's around though, because there's a screen door that he put in my studio, a screen, mm -hmm. you know, a screen door for the mosquitoes that was yeah. really quick and really temporary because I wanted one. He goes, you don't want one of those. Like, I want one. I want, I want the door to be open in the summer. So, you know, he went and got a real cheap one, put it up and, uh, recently when there was heavy winds up there i opened the door i opened the door and the, the wind blew the door the the screws came out everything came out of the door and i was just like john are you here <laughs> are you here, <laughs> are you here? <laughs> now there's, there's been quite a few times where that has happened he gave me uh he gave me a little block that i still have it still survived because it's broken but i still keep it <laughs> where it talks about that family is not always blood. Like, you know, he gave that to me as a gift to show that our friendship that, you know, we considered each other family. And we had a big, big, uh, the first party that we had here, every party I've had here at the house, he had been here at, he's been here since the beginning. Of, I lived here, but his family was here, everybody upstairs. And we all came down. There was about six or seven of us in my kitchen. And uh, I mentioned, I had a bunch of photos of up in the house and I said something out loud, you know, about man, they looked at me and they're like, you okay? And I'm like, man, I really, I missed the guy. Really missed him today. This is the first time we had a 4th of July or a party up there without him. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even finish the sentence and that block of wood that he gave me, no windows open, no doors open. It flew off the counter where it was at and down the stairs and broke into like three pieces. Mm -hmm. And everybody, I didn't even know what it was. I just stopped and go, what is that? And then when I went to look and it was the gift that he gave me, I mean, I'm sorry, but there no way. There's just, there's no coincidences like that. If there was a door open or a wind, anything I would imagine, but it was just, we were quiet. It was nighttime. Nobody made a move. Boom. Second, I mentioned his name that I missed him. <laughs> kind of crazy, but, but I know he's around, you know, and, and, and people like him, they're around, they leave so much with you and so much everywhere. And, you know, so yeah, hurricane, was a song I wrote with uh, another writer, Eric Warfield, a friend of mine who's a great writer. But I knew that when Eric was coming through with that title and some of the lyrics that we were finishing up, it was exactly what it was about was, was John. And, and, and I, it was originally called Hurricane John. I changed the name to Hurricane. Um, 
because everybody here names their hurricanes with first names. <laughs> I, I didn't want it, I didn't want it to be a weather reference. I wanted it to be a, you know a, a little bit of a tribute. But yeah, that fits forever. When you when you miss Portugal, uh, let me ask you, what you really do? Do you have some kind of ritual? Listen to songs, uh, uh, photographs, uh, or you do a call to some. Uh, guys of the family and uh, what you do when you miss that uh, that Portuguese roots uh, yeah you know it's it's interesting it's and I'm sure a lot of people that you know like we said earlier on Nuno's not speaking Portuguese in the interviews etc etc I'm just kidding with you <laughs> no, no no but I'm serious people yeah, yeah. people people I'm sure will think that and I, I'm fine with that I understand that but when You know, in doing Concert for Earth in, in San Miguel and, and yeah. even now we're going to to, to say to, you know, shortly to do this performance with my, all my brothers and, mm -hmm. and all this stuff. Those things are really, really, really important to me. They ground me. I, I don't know how to explain it other than, you know, I there's nothing that can replace it. You know, maybe some food, you know, you, you know, the, with the Portuguese community we have. And sometimes we go to a Portuguese club or sometimes we... You know, I'm, I might listen listen to a bit of a uh, Amalia Rodrigues, maybe you know, because my mom, my mother loved her. But mostly, I just have to go back because when I go back, I don't know how to explain it. It's not just geography. It's not just beautiful. You know, it's just a beautiful place, <laughs> beautiful islands. It's the second I get off the plane, and I like because I fly a lot. I, I, but this only happens there. The second I, the door opens and I walk out in that first step, because it's never inside, it's always outside, as you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's still 1955 <laughs> in Gazorth. But, but I'm happy that that happens, because the second I walk out and I smell the air, I mean, the millisecond I smell the air, I'm back. I, I don't feel that anywhere else. And I don't mean I'm back geog geographically, I'm back emotionally you know, up here in my memory and my heart. And a lot of people say like, oh man, you know, what's the thing that, you know, these plaques on the wall with extreme and, 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 and playing with Paul McCartney and doing all these other things, you know, that I've been so blessed to do. And they say, what are you most proud of? And it's being from there. Like, I, I feel like I have this superpower, the fact that I'm Azorian, the fact that I'm Portuguese. I feel like I'm actually crying telling this. I apologize, but it I tear up when I am. Um... Sorry, man. It's okay. <laughs> I mean that should that should answer your question. <laughs> it's 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 what it it's what it brings out in me. It's like when I'm there, I feel like I'm home. And not like a house, not a place to live, but like, you know, it's your motherland. It's like, you know, where my mother's from. And I feel like a, a power, a push there. And, and it's, and I know that it's, it's a big part of me because when I leave, it's devastating to me. And probably people are going, well, why do you, why do you leave? <laughs> you know, why do you leave? And I, and, and for me, it's, it, it'd be really easy for me to live there. I can decide that tomorrow and stay there and live there. But for me, it's, It's more about the relationship with it, that it's here no matter where I go. Like I said, it's not geographical. I don't land and go, oh, okay, I want to be on the island. It's an emotional thing for spiritual. me. Um, and I, spiritually, emotionally, and I take it everywhere. Uh, it's with me all the time. I mean, I'm not there now and I'm tearing up talking about <laughs> it. So it's one of those things where that's how much of a part of me it is that When I do anything there, smallest things, a small gig, a concert for Earth, anything, you know, perform with Louis, do what we're about to do. I, I'm probably more excited about this, this performance <laughs> with my brothers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In, in Praia, in Praia, I don't, we've never played together, all of us there, ever. It's historical. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's crazy. It's, it's kind of strange that we haven't done this. It's really stupid almost. <laughs> but, but I'm more excited about that and playing for five, six hundred people than I am about touring with Extreme. Yeah. I, I, I don't mean no disrespect to the fans, but in here and deep, there's something 
that gets me to be excited to tour the world and do everything else and take that with me. But mm. when you get on the stage with your brothers that taught you everything and that you watched and you play in your home, your home village where you grew up, my God, it's, it doesn't get any better than that. It doesn't.